So it is here. This is the EasyBook 3 Plus. Now the naming system's a little bit confusing. Not to be confused with the EasyBook 3 Pro, which is in Apollo Lake. This is their latest laptop here from Jumper, and it's meant to be a more premium one. It has a more powerful chipset in here. So it has the Core M3 7Y30, 8 gigabytes of RAM, wireless AC, a 37 watt hour battery. It's got two USB 3 ports on there, micro SD card slot, and a 1080p TN panel, I think it is, according to some posts on my forum. It's not an IPS panel, but we'll find out soon once I get this unboxed and opened up. So this one I ordered from Gearbest and it came via their Spain Express service which goes via DPD UK and that meant I didn't have to pay any taxes on this which was great however it did take about almost two and a half weeks to arrive so very slow there on the shipping time. So the box looks in reasonably good condition here so I hope it hasn't sustained any damage. Okay, so like the other jumpers, we have the power supply in that top little box. And it's DC in there, and this is rated to 12 volts, 2 amps. Alright, so plenty of padding around it. Jumper logo on the top there. So it weighs in at 1.32 kilos. So it comes in to be about 13 millimeters. That's just the metal housing there. If I include that rubber foot, and it's around 17 millimeters there. So I have seen this exact same build. This chassis has been used by T-Book. Well, the T-Book 4 that I reviewed and checked it out. It's exactly the same, but that was in gray and this now is in silver. So we do have that easy access slot there for a 22 by 42 SATA 3 SSD. So on the left side, we have a USB 3 port, micro HDMI out, and then this status LED here is for charging. Now I hope this port is going to work, the micro HDMI, because on my T-Book 4 from this same ODM didn't actually work, so I will be testing that out. And then on the right side, a micro SD card slot, another USB 3 port, DC in, and then of course 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with microphone support. Okay, so the hinge I've noticed, there's a bit of a difference here because on the T-Book 4 they didn't place any magnets in, so the screen actually flopped around a little bit. So at least with the jumper, They've customized it, of course, with that original design manufacturer and asked for magnets there. So there we have the keyboard. Hopefully this has improved over the T-Books. Actually it is, it feels a lot different to me. The T-Books was more spongy. That has an okay feel. So, so far the build quality is looking really good. We do have this large touchpad. Now this should be a precision touchpad if it's the same one that was used in the T-Book 4. So just above the keyboard here, we have three status LEDs, power, numbers, lock, and then the caps lock. So on either side of the screen, we get these little rubber pads here. Now that's to stop the keyboard while hopefully being rubbed up against the screen or the palm rest part of it with the metal against metal. That hopefully should not happen. And you can see dual array microphones either side of the front facing two megapixel webcam. Okay, so let's get this powered on and have a look at that screen and confirm whether it's a TN panel or IPS. And you'll notice that the power button location, at least it isn't where the delete key should be. We've got this extra row here for your home page up and down and end. So that is now just powering up. It should be quite quick because it does have a 128 gigabyte SSD in it. So it looks like we'll probably have to go through the first setup. I don't think someone has created an account already on this. Yep, okay, so I've got to get this set up, and I can confirm, yes, this is a TN panel. That's pretty obvious that you need to look at it straight on, because see how those colors are shifting out? So, yeah, definite TN. That is a real shame that this isn't an IPS screen. Now just to point out that I've tested out all the ports, so both USB 3 ports will power external hard drives. Micro SD card sits in flush, just like the T-Book 4, and the HDMI does work, it's outputting video at 4K 30Hz maximum. All right, so let's take a detailed look at the screen that everyone is rambling about in my forum. There's a lot of complaints about it. So as I pointed out before that it looks like it's a TN panel, but I have my doubts a little bit. And the reason why is because look at this. Those horizontal viewing angles are really good, like an IPS panel. Maybe it's the anti-glare coating that's affecting those vertical 
viewing angles, or maybe it's just one of those re more recent teen panels that don't have the color shifting out really bad on the horizontal viewing angles, but then the vertical, of course, look at that, see how that's shifting. But once you look at it, you get the angle right and you look at it straight on, it's not a bad panel, really. It's leaning towards cool white, certainly. The blacks around the outside there you see are quite deep. And to me, I don't know, is it a deal breaker? You really have to think hard about, will this bother you having that shifting for the vertical angles? But yeah, as I said, once you get that screen sort of spot on, everything's fine there. But if you intend to watch videos or something with other people looking at the screen, then yeah, it's going to affect them because you can't get that angle correct for everyone, just yourself there. But overall, it's reasonably bright too. It goes uh, right up to about 300 lux. So overall, deal breaker screen, you're really going to have to just think long and hard about those vertical viewing angles. Now having a look at Windows here, so we do have that 8 gigabytes of RAM and I have confirmed here just looking at the info in the uh, memory speeds here that it is running in dual channel as well and the maximum supported speed there for the 7Y30. So that is good. Windows has activated. Now I did see some strange thing called Mi, Mi Miang or some sort of Chinese thing that was running in the device manager uh, in the processes there that I saw. So I killed that. I don't know whether that's a malware or something or a Trojan. Don't think it is because it's passed all the virus scans so far. I'm not too sure what it is doing though. Now it could be something to do, I feel, with this program here that it's running called Touchpad Blocker. Now what this does is try to block out those um, touches on the touchpad there. Now I just wanted to comment too on that touchpad that it is very nice. It is a precision touchpad. So you've got full control of gestures and the accuracy and the smoothness and things of it. It does seem really quite good, just like the T-Book 4s. Exact same hardware in there, so not really too bad there. What else we have on here for hardware? Well, we've got Intel Wireless AC3165. Now, there's been a few complaints about this. A lot of people have mentioned in the forum, well, a lot, only really one, I think it is, or two, they're having problems with the performance of the wireless. Now, I haven't seen this yet. I've done my test here, and it came out with very decent speeds. Now, I went over to the furthest side of this building here, in fact, out the door. So it's going through about four different walls. Still managed to get connection. I didn't think I would be able to then because these are really thick concrete, old style stone walls here in, in this building. And the speeds, yeah, they are 10 times slower as expected there. And then I tested it yet again from another room and still good speeds and range. And I haven't noticed any hiccups here, but I will be monitoring this and keeping a very close eye on those speeds there. And just a couple of other things to point out that the SSD in there is a 4C1 and the write speeds are a little slow here because of the size of this. It's only 128 gigabytes. If you get the 256, if you decide to upgrade it, then you'll see around 400, 450 writes improved speeds there. But it does feel pretty snappy. It boots up quick, so no problems really so far in my initial hands-on here with the speeds of the system. Now I've had a little bit of a type on this keyboard and overall it feels really quite decent. I'm enjoying typing on it. I haven't noticed any missed keystrokes or anything, but just bear in mind this is early days with me using it here. Now we do have four speakers on this and it's like the T-Book. The speakers themselves are located along here and they fire up. So we've got two little slots here, two little slots there. So the sound comes up just between that gap there between the lid and the bottom of where the keyboard is. But let's have a listen to how they sound. Okay, I don't really want to listen to any more of that. They have got a bit of distortion at 100% volume and they really are not loud enough. They don't sound good at all. These speakers are poor. Now the BIOS is pretty much locked down to us. We've only got a couple of options here. So secure boot, boot options, and that is really it with the boot overdrive. So I've got a Linux Manjaro pen right in here. Let's see if we can boot it and it will run Linux. Hopefully it will. Yes, it looks like it's going to work, so that is good to see. So Linux Manjaro is working, wireless is working, everything is working. Screen brightness, volume adjustment. The only thing that is not working 
is the touchpad. So you'll have to hunt around and find drivers for the precision touchpad that it uses. Now we'll check out the lid flex. I'm pressing down quite hard here and really that is not bad. That's fine, no issues with that. There's a little bit, but that's normal. Now the hinge feels reasonably stiff there. And really overall the build, a little bit of flex, but it is quite solid. I have no complaints with the build quality or the hinge in this. Okay guys, so that is the Jumper EZ Book 3 Plus. This is the Core M37Y30 version with eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabyte SSD. So, so far it's looking promising, it's looking good, apart from that screen. So the problem is, as I outlined and showed you, the vertical viewing angles just aren't that good. You have to look at it straight on. But really, apart from that, the rest of it is very decent. I do like typing on that keyboard so far, seems really quite good. The touchpad I'm familiar with, I've used it in the T-Book 4 and it is a good precision touchpad they have in there. USB ports are powering external hard drives, the HDMI out is working up to 4K 30Hz and the build quality overall it seems to be well put together, it's reasonably thin. The weight isn't too bad, just under 1.4 kilos. Now battery life, thermals, gaming performance and all the rest of that that I normally do, some more benchmarks too. That'll be all up and coming in my full review of this EasyBook 3 Plus here. Thanks so much for watching this video. And now if you do have any questions or you want to know a little bit more about the screen issue here or whatever, let me know down in the comments and I'll try and get around to answering you there. Bye for now.